Hey guys, Cohesive Friendship Unit here. I'm with Jake. Hey. Jeremy. What's up? And Brian. No video devices found. Uh, <laughs> bummer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to be talking about the Game Awards tonight. The The Game Awards uh, came and they went, and uh, I was personally pretty impressed with what happened. I thought the, the reveals were overall of a, a much higher caliber than years previous. I thought the show itself kind of came into its own this year. I thought this was like the year where it it really shined for me at least. People uh, are going to look back on this year and think yeah, wow, yeah, that was the yeah. year. It was it's only cuz Zelda. Only cuz Zelda won. But uh, what was what was uh what was some of you guys' favorite game reveals? So remind us what got revealed this year. I'm not going to name everything that got revealed. So well, the big ones. The big, I'll, I'll the do highlights. A I'll do a few highlights. Okay, so we got, and this this will include trailers, I guess. So we got we got a new Death Stranding trailer. We got a possible Bloodborne teaser. Uh, we got the Breath of the Wild DLC, which dropped the same night. We got a Bayonetta one, two, and three announcement for the. Oh my God, Bayonetta one's coming out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh shit, Bayonetta one <laughs> wow, and <okay>. two, <laughs> whatever, are uh, both coming out. So Cal and three, dude, and three. All but wait, whoa, 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 Chris, 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 wait, 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 hold up. Uh, so Caliber, so I heard that So Caliber uh, six dropped, right? No. I'm sorry. Yeah, So Caliber six, isn't it? The trailer. Is five? That's the, what I meant. The trailer. Yeah. So this, the, the trailer is out for So Caliber six. Yes. But what about So Calibers one through five? Are did they also put out trailers for So wow. Caliber one, two, three, four, and five? You're real funny. Uh, in the Valley of the Gods, <laughs> uh, Fade to Silence, the PUBG uh, 1.0 trailer, Sea of Thieves, Dream for uh, PlayStation VR, A Way Out, uh, Witchfire, GTFO, uh, Metro Exodus, World War Z, Vacation Simulator, uh, Accounting Plus, uh, Warframe, and Fortnite Battle Royale 50v50. Those are kind of like the, the big Warframe highlights. So, having said all of that, uh, what were some of the, what was what was each of your favorite reveals? Jeremy. Well, oh, yeah. Bayonetta 2. Oh, God. No. Um, uh, it, so, my favorite trailers or like my no, most interesting reveals? What was your favorite, reveals? favorite reveal? Yeah. Um, I'm going to answer my own question and say that my favorite trailer, because I don't have an answer to what you said, but I thought the Death Stranding trailer was pretty cool. All right. Um, I don't know that I will enjoy the game because I wasn't super thrilled uh, at my one attempt at playing Metal Gear, but I thought the trailer looked very cool. It looks like it had a lot of cool concepts, um, so I really enjoyed that. In terms of my favorite reveals, I thought that... Um, the the witching one, not the Witcher, Witchfire. the other one that had Witchfire. Yeah, I thought Witchfire looked really really cool. Um, I think maybe of all of the new titles that were announced, that's the one I would be most likely to get. It to me looks kind of like, um, like to to it's like kind of uh, what um, Bloodborne is to Dark Souls. Uh, this kind of appears to be to to Doom. I guess maybe that's a bad analogy, but it kind of looks Doomy in gameplay. With that kind of cool um, paranormally uh, vibe. All right, yeah, I was gonna say it looks a lot like Doom. It's uh, from the creators of The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, Painkiller, and Bulletstorm. So not the guys that made Doom, but it looks very similar. At least in terms of gameplay. I really right. liked the the graphics on it. I yeah, thought it the looked like a really, really awesome good. game. What about you, Jay? Uh, so I was really excited for. Bloodborne, if that is a Bloodborne tease. If that is the Bloodborne tease, and okay. if it comes out on PC, I'm, I don't think it <laughs> will. I know. I'm, well, I'm crossing my figures, and since we don't know what it was, I'm just hoping for the best. But I'm a big I fan think, of Dark Souls, so I would be super, super hype if it came out on PC. I mean, it's either uh, Bloodborne or the or a new IP, because they said that they're done with uh, Souls games. So all right, that, that is true. I mean, they could also just be lying, and it could be a new Souls game. But I, you know, I think it's it's. I do think it's Bloodborne. Yeah. It's probably Bloodborne. I'm uh, also excited for Metro. I played the first one. I haven't played Metro Last Light, but I've mm-hmm. heard it's fantastic. So it's always good to see a new great game come out like Metro. So all right, uh, 
Brian, do you have any? Uh, I well, so I'd like to preface all okay. of my following statements with the fact that I did not watch the video game awards because I was actually playing video games. <laughs> That's um, fine. So, but out of the things that you just listed, the game that I was perhaps most excited about the sound of was that, uh, that accounting plus there. If that is like, <laughs> that, no, that is no, my, if, if that is a Microsoft Excel simulator, no, simulate, no, like, okay, in no. real time, hours of struggling with Excel, I would be all over that. So that's not it. We will talk about that because that's like but, the, the next question. I'm going to circle back to that and I will tell you what it is. Oh. I think you'll be very excited. Will I actually be excited about it? No, I think you will. I sincerely oh, okay. think you will okay. be very okay. happy because it sounds like you're not fully in on what it is. I, uh, I don't think so, no. All right. I guess uh, not. Well, my personal uh, favorite reveal was probably... Well, so so my favorite trailer was the, the Death Stranding trailer, but my my favorite reveal was is going to have to be Witchfire, probably. I think that looked the most promising to me uh i was i was a little disappointed with the zelda dlc trailer personally and i don't know i'm not really a huge dlc guy so that that didn't really surprise me but yeah i really like like we were talking about earlier i think the the art style in that and the the little gameplay we kind of saw looked it all looked really polished really good uh i'm excited to get in on that so Circling down, I, I want to know what the most kind circling of circling down. Circling down, yeah. Dude, that's not optimistic. We're like circling a funnel. up. That's true. We got to be going optimistic. Up. Everything You're is right. Up We're circling up. We're circling. Gravity up. doesn't go up. Gravity goes down. So I want to talk about the most kind of uh, pleasantly surprised reveal, like the most unexpected with a positive twist. And I'm gonna I'm gonna start this one off because Brian mentioned it with uh, accounting simulator or uh, accounting plus. Sorry. Uh, Brian, that game is actually uh, co-developed, co-voiced, co-directed. There's there's a heavy influence uh, with people involved in Rick and Morty, uh, oh, oh. and the voice <laughs> the voice of both Rick and Morty. That guy uh, is Justin is Roiland. yes, he's heavily voiced in this game. Uh, I think you should you should probably check out that trailer. Uh, for me, that was a, a huge pleasant surprise. Uh, and it's coming out soon on PSVR, December 19th. So that was like double whammy. I don't have a PSVR, though. I know. It's a VR game. But you should watch the trailer. I, I think you'd like it. Uh, my second kind of biggest pleasant surprise was probably the the game that I guess Jeremy didn't like, In the Valley of the Gods. I really liked the art style. And uh, I'm currently playing a pseudo esh walking sim right now. So I think uh, this might be another one that I can get in on. What about you guys? I agree. I was pretty excited for In the Valley of Gods. Uh, well, I guess, I don't know if I would say excited. I'm, I'm probably not going to play it because they're not really up my alley as far as game yeah. type. But uh, I'm pissed I love about that 2019, it, so. though. Yeah. That is a long time to tease a game. Yeah. So... So if I could probe a little bit, what is it about that trailer that got you excited? Was it I them it looking like a, at a pyramid, or was it them walking through the desert? It looked like a Pixar movie to me. All right, so you like you expected to have like a deep story, and you want to like figure that shit out? Yeah, I, I mean, I expect it to be a good walking sim. It's an experience, you know. It's a, it's a good looking one. It, I mean, yeah. the art style didn't vibe for you, but uh, I liked it. I think Chris liked it as well. I think I my I don't know that I disliked the art style. It just like the shapes um, and just just the overall aesthetic kind of reminded me of like late '90s like point and click. Like they looked a little like blocky in a weird way. They looked everything looked pretty round, but like their faces were like oblong and shit, right. uh, which I didn't dislike. It was just surprising. Um, so that I I'm, I'm neutral on the game. I don't. There was nothing in it that hooked me in as like you know as a viewer. Firewatch also their their past game is playing a lot into kind of the excitement for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, any any other pleasant uh, surprises? I thought Vacation Simulator. If you want to go surprises, I expected that to be totally dumb, and it was amusing. Uh, I don't have VR either, so I won't be playing it. But it was a funny and and uh, quirky and fun ad. Yeah. If I had VR and if it was, you know, a reasonable price, would I check that out? Or if like had, if it a friend had it, would I check it out? Yeah, for sure. It looked cool. 
Yeah, so I mean, Job Simulator was kind of one of the marquee launch titles for the Vive and the Rift, and it being yeah. like fun. Uh, so yeah, what what have we come to as a society <laughs> that that you would you would buy a video game that simulates you being at work? And I don't think, think it does that. Well, it uh, it well, puts I, you in a job yeah. setting, but it lets you do whatever the fuck you want. The so job, like, like your job, is called job. Like you have a mug that says "I love job." Well, yeah, I mean, it's, and like it's you're tongue in cheek. But still, yeah, it's very like, tongue in cheek. At the core of it, at the core of it, you're still buying a video game that simulates you going to the job. Hey, man, we've had Harvest Moon for fucking how many years now? Yeah, Harvest Moon's been now? around for a while. Also, Farming Sim sells a lot. I do not have Farming Sim. I, I did have. Har- I was into Harvest Moon when I was like twelve. But now you have an actual job. So I mean, The Sims. No, I don't have an actual well, you've, job, you've which is why I play some, video you've games. Had, you've had oh, several. Trap simulator. You've had, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but that's like that's something that I would enjoy. <laughs> that's strange. <laughs> that's strange, my that. boy. Jake, anything, uh, anything fun and unexpected from you? Um, not much besides the uh, Valley of the Gods. As I said, that was probably the most unexpected and pleasant surprise for me from this one. Besides uh, right. Death Stranding, it wasn't yeah. unexpected, but yeah, it was great crazy. trailer. Um, yeah, when when you make an announcement that both Norman Reedus and Hideo Kojima will be at the Game Awards, you kind of know that it's going to happen. Right. <laughs> uh, Brian, anything from you? I I didn't like I said I didn't watch it, so I wasn't surprised by anything. All right, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, he so, was surprised that you watched the whole thing. <laughs> so I I want to talk about the. Uh, the orchestra a little bit because i think jeremy checked out the orchestra i did and and i mean i watched the whole show so i i'm did i i thought it was really well done yeah it was awesome i think it was they should super bring cool. that back i think they should bring that back did they not and, do that in years past no this is the first year so for those of you playing at home or on this podcast even who haven't seen what we're talking about as they announced or as they kind of did the hype you know train for the game of the year titles and um, they, they did had, the nominees yeah at, well, they, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Uh, they were um, doing, like, gameplay footage in the back. They had, like, the title would come up of the game, and then it would be gameplay footage, and then they played, like, major themes from the game with a real-life orchestra. Uh, and it was really expertly done. Um, the themes were recognizable. I didn't play Zelda that much, and I still was familiar with the overall tone of what they were doing. Um, I think Chris and I agree that the Player Unknown's uh, music was... There were some creative liberties. And yeah, I don't yeah. know that that music is in the game per se, but there's not really a lot of music in the game, so fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I thought... So I, I saw the... Um, I, I saw the Legend of Zelda Symphony of the Goddess concert in, in uh, Pennsylvania. So I, I kind of had experience with, like, orchestrated music on top of gameplay, and I kind of knew that I personally liked it, but I'm really impressed with how they pulled it off on this one where they uh, were able to transition between games and it was really well done for me. I think they should keep it up. And that's for something sure. that's that's something that, you know, you can search three three years down the line, you know, if because these are all good games. These are, you know, the arguably in the top five games of the year. So, you know, in a few years back when you're thinking, oh, Horizon Zero Dawn, that was a good game, you can you can hear some nice orchestrated music from it. Uh, I think that's that's nice. And I think to circle back to a comment you made earlier, or to circle down to a comment you made earlier, yeah, or, or perhaps yeah. to circle up, <laughs> um, you had said that this was uh, the first year that you really felt like the, the Game Awards really came into their own as an award yeah. show. And this is the sort of thing I think you expect of a real award show. This is the sort of thing they do at the Grammys. Um, they don't really do this exact sort of thing at the Oscars, but that level of uh, work being put in and that level of polish I think if they want, you know, people to think of them in that same way um, and set themselves a, a little apart from the pack, I think it definitely gave it that vibe. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely come a long way since the, the Spike TV Awards, that's for sure. <laughs> that's kind of where this all started. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I also, I agree. I think that was definitely a level of polish that kind of elevated it a fair amount, for sure. For sure. For sure. Um, I, next, I want to talk about a weird emphasis on VR. There was there was a very strong VR presence in the announcements. Uh, we don't have to dwell on this for too long, but you know we had oh, vacation. No. We had vacation simulator. Oh, I'm ready to go. Okay, we had vacation simulator. We had dreams. We had uh, accounting plus. 
that's you know three VR games uh, fairly big. I was kind of under the impression that I personally thought that VR was kind of going to fizzle out. It, it surprises me that they're still getting reasonable reveals. And I don't know if that's just because those are the only reveals they could get on the Game Awards or if uh, PR... I know PSVR has been selling fairly well and there's been a lot of good sales on Oculus and HTC Vive. So maybe now that the price is going down, they're really it's kind of starting to come into its own. But I don't know. I was, I was pleasantly surprised that there was a strong VR presence. What do you guys think? So when Mike, oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I just want to clarify, and then Brian, I'll let you jump in. When was uh, PlayStation VR released? About a year ago. All right, so that's that's kind of I'm gonna go from there. But Brian, well, let's but, let's so, see where you're so, gonna jump in. So real quick, uh, it came out a year ago at four hundred dollars. Realistically, sure. more if you had to buy Move controllers. Now you can get it for about two hundred. All right, I'm gonna go back to that later, but I want to hear Brian's comment. So my thing with VR is it's at at this point it's kind of like 4K, and the problem with VR, in in addition to the fact that it's expensive, it's getting cheaper, but it is still expensive, is that it makes like 50 percent of the population nauseous. So right <laughs> off the bat, including you know, Jeremy and myself, yeah. Right. It, so why would you want to spend something, spend five hundred dollars on something that is going to make you nauseous? You wouldn't do that. So right off the bat you have a limited market um i think that the companies that have developed vr i think that it, it it's almost like 3d tvs um maybe it has a little more traction than 3d tvs did uh but i think that they've spent a lot of money in developing these technologies and they're not gonna pull the shoot on it until it's absolutely like the last minute. They're going to try to get these technologies as much exposure as they possibly can. If they have a good month, they're going to be telling you about that. Um, they're trying to get these things out there into the hands of, of consumers. And, you know, maybe it, maybe it will gain more traction than 3D TV. I think that, I think that it probably will. Um, but fundamentally, you're still limited at least right now, the yeah. way the technology stands, to 50% or less of um, whatever target market that you want to pick because of the issues with, with people getting nauseous off of it. And that's before you even take into consideration the the, yep. the surface area you need in yep. your house. Mm -hmm. it takes right. a lot so, of space. Right. And, and the fact that generally VR games don't look that good. That's like, because you got to run them at ninety plus frames a second. Right, and but the resolution's really twice. low. Yeah. And, well, you right. got to run one, and yeah, you got to run the game twice essentially. Right. So maybe I still don't think it. Even if the hard, even when the hardware catches up to it, I still don't think it'll be like a television yeah. where pretty much everybody has one because of that issue. Once we I, get the, once they start putting the chip right in your brain. <laughs> that will be all. I mean, I agree. I think it was uh, largely, uh, like when it was being hyped, I think it was over, um, oversold. Were... Not oversold, right. but uh, people estimated the tar the audience to be bigger than it actually was. They were writing checks that they couldn't cash. Yeah, I I think it's definitely an enthusiast thing. But I'm still happy that it's still going. Like, well, so I, it, I can I surprise like, that it's yeah, still around, to be honest? Can I follow up on Brian's comment? Because I yeah. think he made a, a couple of excellent points. I think the 3D TV analogy is spot on. Uh, and I think where we are right now is, so the, the PlayStation VR was released a year ago. When was the HTC Vive released? A year and a half ago, a year ago? 2015. 2015? And Oculus was released to the public around the same time, yeah? Yeah. But realistically, th I think this is the peak. Oh, I sorry. Think that... April, April 2016. Go ahead. Okay, so... so Within yeah. the last year or so. Yeah, about that. About a year, year and a half ago. 18 so months, yeah. I think this is um, th this is kind of the peak. It's been out for a year. I think some people have gotten their hands on this. I think that the expectation is still high that this is going to be a new technology that people want. And I think there are enthusiasts who are excited about the idea of something new who have bought it. Um, but I think that similar to everything that Brian and Jake and you were just saying, there's obvious technical limita limitations to the games, not the least of which is the the issue of um, the the surface area you would need to realistically like play a real true VR game instead of having to move with a joystick, which is really the central problem that makes people nauseous, I think. Um, so I think you're right that it is going to fizzle out. 
we're just not quite over that hill yet. Um, these are really kind of concept games, all three of them, um, about like what VR could be. Uh, but I think like 3D TVs, which was also based on the idea that like, oh, people will want more immersion. That's really the future. Um, and that was put huge. the chip right in your fucking brain. Uh, yeah, there was a huge push for that shit. People bought them to an extent, and then they went away. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's a circle. 3D makes people nauseous. <laughs> a circle sideways to your question, Chris. Big circling I, sideways. I think oh, the, the reason there was so much uh, VR this year is there's still a big push by game makers and game industry professionals to keep VR alive. I mean, there's the VR category in the Game Awards. There's all the... All the games yeah. this year are from major companies trying to push out new games for VR. And and I mean these these weren't included because it was too late. But you know we we got Skyrim VR, Fallout Four VR, and uh, Doom VFR just in the last month. Which is... but but what about Skyrim Three VR? Is right. that coming out? But anyway, my point is like we are still the 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 caliber of games on this list are fairly impressive, but they're continuing to ramp up. But ultimately, it's just a gimmick, because uh, all of those games you can buy on regular PC, no VR. No, you can't. You can't <coughs> get... Oh, the... All, the the you three can't games, get Doom, Skyrim, and Fallout. You can't get Doom VFR. That's yeah, a, but it's... That's you, a, get a, you can get experience. Doom is Doom. Is Doom. What's I mean, different about it? It's it's like a whole... It's, a, it's, it's like a new game. game. Yeah. But Doom is a... Doom is... It's not really the same sort of Skyrim and, and Fallout you can get on PC. It'll look better, it'll run better, and you don't have to spend five hundred dollars to play up. it. You but, won't have to throw up. Right. So I mean for games like that, I think until unless someone comes out with a killer app for VR that you can only play on VR, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be it's gonna be like three D TV where you know, in a couple of years, will be. It'll still be around, but it won't be as in the forefront uh, as it is right now. All right, Very little enough. mainstream penetration. I yeah. mean, uh, yeah, I mean, per, and again, I would put myself kind of in an enthusiast camp. I run a video game podcast, and I have a, you know, I have a GTX 1080, so I'm putting money in. He's an enthusiast. I, He's yeah, I, I invest. I invest a fair amount on campus. You guys. I I personally, you know. It, even I'm still kind of waiting. I would like to buy an Oculus with touch at like $200. Uh, and I had two Oculus dev kits. So, I mean, that's just where I'm at. But I was, you know, I'm still happy that it's 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 <laughs> hanging by a thread. Uh, all right. We're going to shift on to the actual awards. So Zelda 1, which we all <laughs> predicted in our pre-show. Uh, do, we, do we have any extended thoughts on that? I mean... I'm I'm happy. That's that's what I wanted. That's personally to win. But. I think it deserved it. It deserved game of the year. All right. Yeah. Jake and Jeremy played it uh, a little bit at least. Uh, I don't think anyone's think... surprised that it won. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any any other thoughts on Zelda winning? I think I've made my thoughts on Zelda winning clear in previous podcasts. I think it was a kind of a foregone conclusion. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I mean it's it's winning most game of the year awards that I've seen. So, but again, every it's a game, Zelda game, of course, exactly, it's going to yeah. win. And it's the first Zelda game since 2011, and that one was debatably a disappointment. So, the first big one in a decade. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, all the other games are great. PUBG's great. Mario's great. I haven't played Persona uh-huh. Horizon, but I want to. So, they're great. PUBG's great. PUBG's great. PUBG's great. I, I mean, mean it's I, a good I, game. We were, but... we were all talking about this earlier. I think that was pretty much the only category that it could win, and you'd be like, okay, it's valid. Because really the only thing it has going for it is the multiplayer aspect. Oh, yeah. you mean best multiplayer? Right. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, so so yeah, now let's Oh let's sorry just... to sorry no, that's abrupt, fine. abrupt no. shift there. Let's talk <laughs> about let's talk about some some notable winners, either Winners that you thought, yeah, that, that should that should deserve it, or winners that kind of came out of nowhere and surprised you. Uh, Brian just, he, yeah, he made Brian thought that, and I agreed with him that PUBG, if if it was going to win anything, it should be best multiplayer. Like right, that was where it fit. Only one that it, it really should. 
Yeah. That was my two cents on it. I agree. And I think, Brian, you mentioned that you were happy to see Cuphead. Yeah, I was I was very happy to see Cuphead win. I think it won more awards, individual awards, than anything else. Yeah, Cuphead was the game this year that swept the categories it was put in. So right, what's, I, what is a rundown of the categories it won? Asking the real questions here. Best art direction. Cuphead. Best independent yeah, game. Best indie game. Um, best debut indie game. Best yeah, art direction. Three. Yeah, best art direction, indie game, and debut indie game. And it um, it was nominated for best action. Best action adventure? Best action game. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it did it did well. I don't know. I think that's I think that's really encouraging. I think that that's in light of what's going on with EA, um, and the pushback that we're really starting to see against uh, like microtransactions and games and stuff like that, uh, freemium content. Um, I think that that's kind of the way that things are going to go. It's going to move more yeah. to the indie developers who don't have the huge obligations that EA has, and they don't have to pay, you know, as much money as EA does, so they don't have to put that shit in their games. And um, and hey, it's you know, it's twenty bucks, very reasonable price on launch day. It was twenty bucks. Right, and, and that's uh, that's that's like what an equivalent to what. A, old school game cartridge would have been you know back yeah. in the day it's about the same equivalent you know in terms of money and, and i think it, that's i think that's a good way to go i think that i like to see more indie stuff i like to see you know more voices at the table it makes for a better end product and yeah i mean it, it on top of that also good that it won um or that that it's you know an exclusive for xbox xbox kind of needs i mean it's also on pc sort but, of yeah as 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 exclusive as every Xbox exclusive is, it's good that they kind of they had a good a good game this year that they could really uh, push out there that could sweep some awards, even if they didn't develop it. Um, well, I, I think what's I think what's most important is that when they they pulled off, they delivered on what they said it was going to be. Yeah, they really did. It, it it was an anticipated game, but it was anticipated for a good reason. It wasn't something that they said it was going to be something that it wasn't. Yeah, um, I just like the way they they do stuff. Uh, yeah, so I'm enthused to see that. It was I'm, also it was also nominated for best score, and it lost to Near Automata. I was gonna say my like pleasant surprise. I'm very happy that Near Automata won best score. I think it definitely deserves that. I think Cuphead's music is very good, and I you know in my like impressions of it a few weeks ago, I said the first thing that kind of took me in that was the the opening song, but uh, all of the music is. Uh, one, it's static. It's not dynamic. It doesn't change depending on what's going on when you play. And two, it's all, you know, 30s. Uh, one genre. Yeah, well, it's all one genre. The, that's kind of the flavor, you know? Like, yeah. was the platformer but, games back in the day, it was just a it was a loop of a couple of minutes, and it just played over and over and over again. Yeah, but from, from like, a best score slash music, I think Nier's score in how dynamic it is in that it can change uh, so suddenly and so well, uh, as well as its diversity, is is really impressive. Um, and, I, you know, I'm happy that Resident Evil 7 won best VR. I think that's... I think VR can really take you when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to horror, from my personal experience... Well, and especially with the sound, that's that's kind of stronger than the the visual aspects in a lot of senses. Yeah, that's so, true. Especially with VR. And and my last my last kind of surprise was Mario Rabbids winning best strategy. I'm very surprised that it won over XCOM 2. And you know, it's a it's a really good game. Yeah, I wanted to bring that up because I've played Total War. Um, I've played XCOM 2. I haven't played Mario Rabbids, but both XCOM and Total War are fantastic strategy games. And I, I'm not really sure how any game could beat those two in that category. So it's I'm pretty surprised. <laughs> it, it's good, but I just I think, don't see that it has the depth or the scale of XCOM <laughs> or Total War. I mean, have I you seen it, Total War 2? Yeah, I've seen Total War 2. I, I don't it. think Mario Rabbids can really compare to that. Even Tooth I, and Tail, which is a fantastic indie game, not really on the same scale. I think it's funny that uh, Mario Rabbids... A lot of people essentially call it an XCOM clone, and it beat XCOM, which is 
That is true. Uh, any any other uh, surprises? Pyre didn't win. <laughs> what was that and, best and, indie game? Uh, yeah, I wish it was nominated for best uh, score or soundtrack because that's really it has a fantastic score in that game. So I'm just disappointed it was not nominated at least. I don't think it, it should have beat Cuphead for best indie, but um, I would I would have liked to see some recognition for that for the best score or something like that. Jake sent me a link previously. It has kind of a cool, like, industrial element in the score. I, and it's, like, kind of counterposed to something else. But it's definitely uh, pretty cool. I'm surprised that The Last of Us won the uh, most anticipated. I'm not. I anticipated it. <laughs> I didn't know that their... I didn't think that their fan base was really big enough for that. But... So here was my whole... Po- Are we ready to transition into this topic? Chris? What topic? Showrunner. This, this, uh, this is the last topic. Into. So, oh, well, the most anticipated. Phenomenal. So well, so no, but our it, yeah. kind of reactions to... So, like, I don't have necessarily surprises in the thing, but I will say, because we made some predictions. So yeah. I thought maybe we would discuss how our predictions shook out. Yeah. So I predicted... Lo, um, I alone predicted that The Last of Us 2, I think, would win most anticipated. And Brian, I think, made a very good argument that um, uh, Red Dead was going to win, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Because they have a large Rockstar has a huge PC fan base. However, yeah. uh, this is from my experience in uh, politics. Um, the size of the fan base isn't really what matters. It's the engagement. And I think that uh, The Last of Us Part Two probably has more engaged fans. I think probably those fans are pretty rabid in there. And that's why I thought maybe Monster Hunter would be a, a good runner up choice, because I think those people are really, really engaged. Uh, They're pretty fanatical about the franchise. They really enjoy it. I've seen it. It looks phenomenal. Everyone says, you know, it's like almost to Zelda tier that people describe The Last of Us as being good, considered by some to be, you know, best games of all time. And uh, I thought those people would be pretty motivated to go out and take a uh, a poll to to, to do participate in the the voting. Um, So if I had to guess, I would say that's probably what happened. Yeah. And um, I mean, other predictions... Death Stranding, hardly a prediction. Uh, Zelda, that also came true. And I predicted that as well. I would just like to throw it out there. Yeah, I mean, that was also kind of... We, we, we wanted to see something from that. Uh, Roll back the tape. Roll back the tape, bitches. Um, PUBG, that was, that was announced. We discussed sure. that coming up. Uh, I don't think anybody uh, would have been able to see the... The, uh, the Witcher, or sorry, Bayonetta 3 as being the other Nintendo announcement. I think that kind of... But what about Bayonetta 2 and 1 that were all... <laughs> I, well, yeah, I mean... Yeah, so I, I think that was kind of out of... Like, I don't think anybody <laughs> was predicting that, personally. I think people were predicting a Bayonetta 1 and 2 port, because uh, Nintendo and Sega put a lot of money into putting that out exclusively on the Wii U, so it didn't sell a lot. Um, but, yeah, that was that was happy. Uh, that was well, good. That's... That's almost kind of in between what you and I were saying last time, Chris. You kind of strongly thought they were going to do a reveal on one of their other big IPs, and I was kind of saying I thought that would be, from their end, poor planning if you look at more the life cycle yeah. of the console and spacing out big titles. And they kind of took an um, um, in-between approach, and they announced Bayonetta, which they are not developing. Sega develops it. It's they, not... they, help, they publish it, though. They, 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 they help with developing it. They sure, something. they've got a hands in the pot, but it's, it's, yeah. it's not their, you know, it's not Animal Crossing. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, or, uh, you know, whatever the fuck else. Um, and they also didn't put a firm release date on it, but basically that it is being developed. And uh, I, I think a minor coup for them that it's being developed exclusively for Switch. I think that's um, that's that's a pretty good win for them. Yeah, and same, I mean, same with the, the Wii U for two. But I think everything else was relatively... I was impressed with how little of this leaked and how much of it is kind of... It, it, relatively this is what i was talking about where it kind of came into its own it was there was some reasonably large stuff here yeah there was yeah i think the biggest stuff we because i would say the biggest two things were probably zelda and um, death stranding death stranding and we had a good sense overall that that those things were going to happen um and then um there was a player unknown we knew about that there was uh the player unknown competitor whose name is escaping me at the moment um we had that um, so none of those were really surprising. I think what was surprising was the kind of just new games from studios yeah. that we weren't necessarily watching. That's where a lot of the surprises came in. Yeah, and all pleasant surprises. Sure. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, any uh, any other thoughts, or are we ready to uh, send it over to Brian? All good. I'm all, all right. set. Brian. Oh well, um, it's 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 not so much a thought, but I actually have a uh, a letter here that was sent to me by the uh, the editor of of one local newspaper that I'd like to read. Is, is that all right? Yeah, go for it, man. All right. It, okay. Here's what it says. <clears throat> Dear Santa, my name is Kevin. I am seven years old and I live in Salem, Massachusetts. My absolute favorite thing to do is listen to the Cohesive Friendship Unit on YouTube because they have, quote, the fucking real dope. (laughs) All I want for Christmas is for them to get a million billion subscribers (laughs) on YouTube, and I hope that you could make that happen for them because, quote, their shit is fucking tight. <laughs> Love, Kevin. P.S. Right. Oh, hold on. There's a P.S. Oh, There's a P.S. Sorry. I also took my mom's credit card and am supporting them on Patreon because <laughs> that shit is, quote, hella funny, yo. That's that's the end of the letter there. Dude, so salute it, to my boy Kevin. So yeah, yeah shout out to Kevin. Uh, thanks for thanks for thanks for uh, thinking of us this Christmas season. And you know, as you guys know, Santa Claus doesn't exist. Uh, so if you could help Kevin's Christmas be just a little bit better, get us those uh, million billion subs, as he's saying here. Um, and and find us at on patreon.com that's p a t r e o n dot com slash cohesive dash friendship dash unit all right uh kevin if you're listening thank you very much very nice letter uh, merry christmas you. buddy merry christmas uh definitely like and subscribe and let us know in the comments what you guys thought of the game awards uh that's all we have for now uh we'll catch you guys in the next one